So uh, we have brought a ton, uh, 30 Surefire EDC L2Ts here to Thailand. And I just want to say as we get started working on a unit with those, I want to say thank you so much to Surefire. Um, they have been incredible. They were fantastic and uh, donated 30 of these. Now, if you recognize, Surefire is known for making very high quality lights. Um, they are not known for making cheap lights. And so for them to donate 30 of them for us to bring over was just incredibly generous to them. Uh, they honestly, they didn't ask for anything in return. They just were wanting to be a part of SWAT Ministries. And so I just want to say thank you, Surefire, for doing that. Um, I apologize for my shirt having this on it, but we had lunch already and I'm apparently that's who I am. So that's what you get. But um, yeah, so we're gonna work on these today. We're gonna work just a little bit with them as both a general awareness tool and then because it has a slightly crenellated bezel, we're gonna work on this as a defensive tool as well. And as we work on those, this becomes a very useful tool when you're in a true non-permissive environment, okay? So, so here where we are in Thailand is a true non-permissive environment. At home in the United States, we have a lot of soft non-permissive environments. In other words, you could get in some trouble carrying a firearm or a knife or whatever. But here in Thailand, you get caught carrying a firearm or in the Philippines perhaps, or in India, and you're not talking about you're gonna get hassled. You're talking about you are going to a prison that no American really has any kind of mindset of understanding. So of course, I didn't bring a firearm here. But everywhere I've been, a flashlight is really no big deal. Nobody ever gives you a hard time about it. I've taken this, I brought this on the airplane. This is my personal one that I carry every day. Um, and it got with me on the airplane from uh, Los Angeles to Tokyo. We went back through security in Tokyo and the Tokyo security had no problem with it. Uh, when we were in Bangkok flying up to Chiang Rai, no problems whatsoever. They don't even give it a second look. So if you can use something like this as a not purpose-built defensive tool, but an effective one, then it'll really help you. So let's think about using it. Today's video is brought to us in part by the generosity of LuckyGunner.com. For the best selection of name brand defensive ammunition and lightning fast shipping on bulk target ammo, head to LuckyGunner.com and thank them for being a sponsor of Active Self Protection. When you're training people all over the world, um, how many of them are able to carry things like firearms, knives, pepper sprays? Uh, this is pretty much zero. Pretty much zero? Yeah, pretty much zero. So everything is pretty much empty-handed skills. Empty -handed um, skills. How about something like a flashlight? Does that enter in much? Um, enter in much into... Into the way that they plan for a potential defensive encounter? Um, not at this point, because they, they don't, they never been, never really utilized or had the ability to utilize something like this to, as a tool. So this is exciting, because if we don't have this in our toolbox, but we have the equipment and then we have the skills to use the equipment, maybe we can. So, um, and in particular, I mean, obviously SWAT is really helping a lot of ministries saving kids out of the sex slavery world. How much of that work is done under darkness? How much of that work is done? I mean, okay, obviously I know we're going into places with light, but how much of the work is done at nighttime? Uh, at least 90%. So, okay, for, for a lot of us living in the U.S., like, I mean, you go out at night just because the sun went down and you want to go get Starbeast or something. But for the ministry that, that you're training people to do, they're out where yeah. it's dark. Yeah. And, and one thing I've noticed here, in most of the U.S., until you get out into the real rural parts of the U.S., I mean, in the suburbs, you go out at night and you still have light all around. Yeah. But here, dude, if you get outside of where there's street lights real fast. Yeah. And so having the ability to throw some light is important. So let's play. Okay, so for everybody, uh, but, but especially for, for rescuers, you're doing 90% low light. First thing that you wanna recognize is that I don't think of a flashlight primarily as a defensive tool. It's an awareness tool. It's an everyday tool, right? So mine rides in my support side pocket. Now, of course, we're in, you know, Mac clothes right now, so, you know, we're not in our EDC, but um, mine rides support side pocket. And I'll tell you why I ride support side pocket, because I just all the time keep this light where I can use it as an awareness tool. So let's think very quickly about what I need here. As a general awareness tool, uh, a question for you, uh, John, is do you think if I need light, is more light or less light better? If I need light, I'm always more light. More, if, I, if I'm more replacing light. the sun, yes. right? More this light is a, is a pocket sun, and, <laughs> and more light is more better. I mean, that's just the bottom line, right? It's true. Um, I do like lights like this. So this particular light has a gas pedal on it. It doesn't have a click. It's not a clicky tail cap. Some people love the click. Uh, I like the gas pedal. The reason I love the gas pedal is 
is that I can ask for a little bit of light. You see, I've just got a little bit of press here and you can see in my hand that I have a little bit of light, five lumen low. When I need a lot of light, bam, I get all the light, okay? So this particular one, 1,200 lumens. Um, and, and the reason that becomes important, it's not just lumens, all right? So one of the things you gotta recognize is you're driving a, a, an LED in here with current, and the more current you drive to the LED, the more it will, it will light up, it'll emit light. But what you do with that light is important. How you focus that beam, throws it in a particular manner, and so the reflector is incredibly important, the glass is important, then that gives you throw, and that's measured in candela. How far out can I see something? It's also measured in lux. So lumens by themselves are not the best thing to look at, but generally, more lumens, more brighter, right? So this particular one throws, yeah, whatever it says on the, the package, I find that I can really see somebody out to about 60 meters or so, 60, 70 meters, I can really clearly identify what is going on and what they're doing. So, I mean, right here, for instance, I'm just at, you know, three meters, nine feet, right? Even in a, an environment like this where we have light, it's daylight outside, we have interior lights on, you can see a little five lumen light gives me a little bit of light, right? But now if I hit the power there, even in a lit environment, I get all kinds of light. So let's talk about using it as a general awareness tool. The thing with the gas pedal, okay, if you're using a clicky, a clicky tail cap, I can, you know, carry it just about any way I want. You see people do this all the time with these, these lights, right? And if you have a clicky tail cap, you can really do that. You can click it on with whatever hand and then look at it this way. Challenge with that is, is that if I end up having to use it as a defensive tool, that's not quite as strong a way to do that. And quite frankly, using the tail cap is a great way to bust this light up. It's not very effective. Um, with the gas pedal, you really can't do that. So you can do one of two things. You can, I've seen people do this and use this to kind of, you know, light it up. This is very uncomfortable. It's very comfortable and, and super easy to use your thumb to activate. So that means you're using this here and holding it with thumb, you know, with the uh, um, crenellated bezel down. So we call it a short held grip. And in that short held grip, I can use this as an awareness tool. I'm gonna say this, if you go into the tactical world, there is a thousand ways that they like to talk about using a flashlight as an assessment tool, right? So and we're not talking about with a gun in hand, so we're not gonna worry about Harry's, we're not gonna worry about Chapman, we're not gonna do any of that stuff. Really what you see people use all the time is something akin to a neck index, a cheek index, a temple index, or an FBI, okay? So the FBI index, they, they hold the light out at a distance. And there's all this discussion about, well, if you have a light close to you, they're gonna shoot at the light. Let me tell you what, fam, if you got 1,200 lumens blasting back at people, they will not be able to see through that. I have seen it in Force on Force. I've experienced it in Force on Force. The photonic barrier that a bright light is, is almost impossible to shoot at. It's just not there. Try to bring a gun up into that line of sight, no chance, okay? Uh, the other thing about a great light, just as an aside, with a really strong focused beam, is it can pass through intermediate light and come back to you. And so that's called breaking photonic barriers. That's maybe for another day. It's one of the reasons I love a light like this. But for me, for a general assessment tool, you're gonna be holding it short held like this. And uh, two things to that. Number one, you're simply going to use this, and I don't like to hold it super close like this because if I'm just using it as a general assessment tool, this is kind of weird. And it's just the bottom line as simple as it gets, right? Now I know people that do this, but my challenge here is, is I've taken out some of my peripheral vision. Now maybe if I'm shooting and I have to do this, I get it, okay? Me personally, I kind of like a cheek weld or a neck weld if I'm shooting, but I'm not shooting right now, I'm just general assessment. So I am modified FBI, and what does modified mean? I'm not this, way out here, that's classic FBI, get it as far away from you as you can so you can see. Instead, I'm just using it and pointing it where I need it to go. It's just up kind of near my eye line, and I'm using that where I go, number one. Number two, I use it in bursts. Here's the thing, this does two things. It is two-way communication. When I hit this light and turn it on, it tells me what's in the direction of the beam. It also tells anyone in the direction of the beam where, in which direction I am. So, I, I'm telling you this, if you take a, you know, like a, a Craig Douglas, Amos, you know, our movement instructors, those kind of classes, if you uh, do any kind of low light shooting class that's force on force, and you, leave, you know, if you're in teams, it's one thing. If you're a solo practitioner though, you leave that beam on all the time, you get shot up a lot. And again, having a little flash where I'm looking, I'm seeing, and then I turn it off and then I go to another spot. Look and see some more. Turn it off. Look and see what else is going on there. Turn it off and move. 
is generally speaking a great way to see what's going on in different places and then kind of disappear yourself. I jokingly call it, it's like ninja smoke bombs, right? I see what's going on, poof, I disappear. I see what's going on, poof, I disappear. I see what's going on, poof, I disappear. Okay? So, <clears throat> Uh, and you can practice that every day. So my light, this EDC LTT is my everyday light. And whenever we leave, uh, you know, a, a restaurant or the mall or a place uh, at night, I start practicing this. We walk around, it, it comes out of my pocket. My wife gets tired of looking at it. <clears throat> I see it, bang, I look, I see, I, I, I spot, I spot, I spot. Then when I get up to my vehicle, if I get about 30 yards from my vehicle, I light my vehicle up. I come, I try to check it out from, from a couple different angles. Now I'm not talking about I'm like circling my vehicle. I mean, I look in the top of the vehicle, I kind of look underneath the vehicle a little bit, kind of look around the sides a little bit, just to make sure nobody's messed with my car. Get into it, no problem, hit the unlock button, you should be able to hear if anybody's messed with your vehicle. So you can do that wherever you go, and then get little ideas of what's going on. Now, of course, what do you do if you hit that and something doesn't feel right? Well, now we've moved in the Cooper's color codes from condition yellow. This is an awareness tool, I'm aware of my world. Now, if something's not right, I can see it from farther off. And, and therefore, when, when I see something, I go, hmm, I wonder what that is. I don't just go, huh. Eh. No, I investigate or I take action to make myself my loved one safer. So that means I went from condition yellow to condition orange. Now, maybe I gotta go, hey, what's going on over there? I gotta see another angle of it. Or maybe I gotta go, I don't like that. So I've had a couple times where there's been somebody kind of hanging out in the parking lot. I light him up a little bit and I go, hey, you okay over there? They're like, yeah, Madam Pool. All right, great, man. What did I just do? I just interviewed him real quick. Gave a little quick interview ping. Are you doing all right? Is everything cool? Are we all right? And if they go, no, you got a problem? Nope, don't have a problem over here. Are you all right? So then I'm in an interview phase and it's not when he's right on top of me. It's when he's 10, 20, 30 yards away. And that does a lot to, to fail the first interview if you are being looked at for potential victimization. I'm gonna tell you, if a guy wants to mug you and you light him up from about 40 yards away and you go, you okay over there? And he's gonna go, Nah, that's not the guy I want to fight. And he probably goes on, okay? So that's how to use this as a, um, a general access search tool.